Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com and I'm here with the Samsung Replenish from Sprint. It's one of their new mid-range Android smartphones. It's a lot like a Blackberry. It has kind of that slab design with a physical keyboard, but it has a touch screen and like I said, it runs Android. So it ships with Android 2.2, stock Android, and also has Sprint ID. So I've been testing it out. I'm gonna give you guys a full review and go into detail and tell you the pros and cons of it. You know, as a mid-range device, how does it stack up with the other mid-range devices on Sprint? And is it worth considering? So it's a Samsung Replenish from Sprint. Before we get on to the review, I had to say a special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile. They send us free phones that we can add to our One Paw Bandit game, which is the game where you can win free phones. One of the great things about Best Buy Mobile is that they sell phones from every major US carrier, including a lot of prepaid carriers. So if you're shopping around and trying to decide, you know, should I go with this carrier or this carrier, should I get this phone? You can pick, compare all of the phones in one store without having to go to several different store. So thank you Best Buy Mobile for being so awesome. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com and let's go check out the Samsung Replenish. Okay, so here we go with the Samsung Replenish from Sprint. And before I start, I want to let you guys know that I usually use a microphone for these videos, uh, but the battery in my mic went out. So I'm using the microphone in the camcorder and I understand the camcorder has a a clicking noise or a ticking noise, uh, which is why I usually use a, use a microphone. So I'm sorry about that, but hopefully it'll just be temporary and it won't annoy you too much. But anyway, so here's the phone, the Samsung Replenish. And it is sort of a you know a mid-range device, but one of the things I like about it is that even though it is you know that mid in that mid-range category, it still looks you know very professional and very business-like. You can see it has kind of that Blackberry design, and then sort of the same design up front too, like a Blackberry, except it's definitely longer and then this is actually a touch screen so it's a kind of a smaller touch screen than you know what we see on most Android smartphones it's a 2.8 inch screen and uh, whenever I first started using the phone and I, and I did the unboxing my first impression was that I thought the display was going to be too small and I understood that it was going to be somewhat small just because of the form factor but then you know when I saw this bezel around the the display it's it's so thick you know, I thought they could have added some screen real estate and made it just a little bit larger. And so I was kind of, you know, worried about that. But then once I actually started using the device, it actually, you know, I got used to it and it didn't bother me as much. And, uh, you know, I didn't feel like it was too small anytime I was web browsing or using apps. You know, I got used to it to the point where it didn't bother me at all. I thought the display was, was fine. So, you know, it is kind of small. Keep that in mind. But if you are worried about that, you know, I don't think it will be an issue because I was worried about it too and it ended up, you know, not being as big of a problem as I thought it was. Now it does kind of have a low resolution, uh, 240 by 320. So, you know, kind of in that, again, that mid-range category, once you get close, I don't know if people to tell, but the text does kind of get pixelated. And so, you know, certain graphics are kind of rough. You see these widgets that I have on the home screen here. On any other smartphone that kind of had a higher resolution, they look a lot better. They look kind of rough now. Um, but, uh, you know, again, that's something to expect just because the category that it's in, you know, it is going to kind of have that lower resolution. Now, it's an Android device. It ships with Android 2.2. Uh, it's actually version 2.2.2, but you know, for the most part, it's Android 2.2, and it's stock Android as you can see, so no custom skin here. The only sort of you know custom feature that Sprint has added is Sprint ID, and uh, you know we've gone over this in the past, so I'll just do a you know a quick run through of basically what it is. Uh, you can download these ID packs, and so you go to Get New, and it has this store right here, but it's based on themes, you know, entertainment. Uh, movies, music, uh, car, you know, business. I've downloaded a green ID pack here. So if I select that ID pack, it will completely change the theme of my phone. And then you can see it also even has different apps. So whenever you download and download an ID pack, it, it comes with certain apps. And so it will change, you know, it's automatically organized. It'll add widgets, the home screen, you know, sometimes the ringtone may be affected. Now, you know, I don't really see very much use in the Sprint ID idea just because, you know, I'm not necessarily going to want to switch my theme just because I want to use a movie app. You know, I would just download that app and then use it whenever I need it. So, you know, I wouldn't necessarily use it very much in terms of, you know, switching themes. The only real use I see for it 
is uh, for people that are new to Android and don't feel like hunting around the market for a specific kind of app, you know, if they want like a, a music app but they don't know what's available or they don't know what to search for, they could just download the music ID pack and it'll come with all the apps that they more than likely wanted. So, you know, it's kind of useful for that, but then again, you don't have to switch themes, you can just stay with your home theme and then those apps are already there. So, you know, kind of a use there, but still not in terms of changing the theme, at least not in my opinion. But that's just a quick run through of, of Sprint ID. And it does ship with that, uh, along with 2.2. And then, like I said, it's stock Android. So nothing is really changed here. Um, it's all basically the same. You can see the messaging interface is same. Nothing in the, uh, nothing in the notification bar. Uh, while we're here in the messaging interface, we'll take a look at the keyboard. And uh, honestly, this is one of the best physical keyboards that I've ever used. And I could tell as soon as I started using it that it was a good keyboard. Uh, just right off the bat, the keys are, you know, they're kind of scrunched just because the form factor, you know, the keyboard is going to be a little, you know, not as wide as your typical, you know, full chord keyboard. Um, but the, uh, the keys have this bubble design, this bubble texture. So let me see if I can put it at an angle and get a good look. See, it's kind of that bubble texture. So even though they're not really island style keys, having that bubble texture, you know, allows you to easily differentiate between each key. And then also another thing that I really like about it is that the keys aren't too firm. So sometimes when the keys are too firm, it's either you have to press so hard that your thumbs get worn out or you're pressing so hard and there's not enough grip on the keys and so my fingers tend to slide around the keys and it's just hard to get a good grip on them and therefore it's it's hard to type as fast as I want to. But not a problem here. Overall it's just a great keyboard. They are kind of those plasticky keys, so not, not rubbery. Um, it's plastic texture, but still um, a great keyboard and just very well designed uh, over the lazy dog. And uh, then you have these four physical Android buttons for menu, home, back, and search, and they're actual physical buttons, not touch-sensitive buttons. Then you have the dedicated camera button, the voice command button, power button, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and the volume rocker button. On the back is the keyboard, or the keyboard, wow, nice. On the back is the uh, camera, and it's a two megapixel camera, and it's a low quality camera, you know, 2 megapixels is not autofocus, it's just a fixed focus camera and as you can see there's no flash. It does capture video but it's very very low resolution. It's 352 by 288 so extremely low resolution. And uh, you know I was kind of concerned again about the camera, you know, being just a 2 megapixel fixed focus camera but picture quality was actually much better than I thought it would be. Now granted, you know, because it doesn't have that autofocus and it's kind of a, you know, low megapixel count, when you take a picture and you get close to it and you zoom in, you can see the picture, it is kind of rough around the edges of, you know, whatever the object is that you're capturing. So, you know, it's still not perfect and, you know, color saturation wasn't entirely there, but it was much better than I thought it would be. The colors showed up, you know, more rich than I thought they would be. You know, again, you know, not, not perfect and, you know, probably won't stack up to other, like, 5 megapixel cameras but still better than what I expected. So, um, you know, kudos to Samsung there because I was expecting a very mediocre, poor, you know, low quality camera, um, but I exceeded my expectations, you know, good for snapshots and, you know, uploading to Twitter or Facebook or, you know, again, if you're a business user using it in, in emails, I think it'd be a good, good use for that.